Hemorrhoids are actually scientific names uh, for uh, the common man's uh, name called PALS. Uh, most of us would know them as PALS. And uh, what it is, is, uh, uh, is an abnormal swelling of the blood vessels in the anus. It is very common in Singapore, and uh, perhaps because we, we love to eat. And the presentation, usually it is bleeding. Bleeding uh, when you pass motion. Classification of uh, hemorrhoid no, stage one. Uh, you cannot see the hemorrhoid from the outside. That's why the picture here is black in color because you can only insert the scope in and you can see the hemorrhoid from the scope. Now for stage two, three and four, that is when you can actually see it from the outside. As you can see, you can see the, an the anus and then sticking out. Stage four is the worst where it cannot be reduced at all. It's painfully sticking out, it's bleeding, the patient is in distress. And then stage three is somewhere in between. A lot of people believe that uh, amaroids uh, are due to the lack of fiber. Uh, but we know also that there are a group of people that uh, there is a hereditary cause. Father have, uh, has, has hemorrhoids, grandfather, grand uncle, or great grandfathers, they all have hemorrhoids. And uh, um, so these are hereditary. Now, besides the lack of fiber, uh, the other things would be spicy food. Uh, these are also because it irritates the anus. You know that very well that uh, sometimes when you eat a spicy food, you tend to go to the toilet a little bit more. When you tend to uh, go to the toilet more, you traumatize the anal area and that causes bleeding. Some patients complain of two things. One, uh, when they pass motion, they feel a lump uh, that comes out from the anus and subsequently it just reduces uh, spontaneously. Uh, another uh, complaint that you usually have is uh, itchiness. Uh, they feel that uh, there is some itch and discomfort in the anus. Treatment for minor pulse uh, are just lifestyle changes. Um, one, we know that uh, if uh, the person loves spicy food, just cut back on it. If a person doesn't even bother to eat any fruits and vegetables uh, and they are very constipated and every time they pass motion, it's a big motion and it's traumatised, they have to stretch the anus. So these patients should be go on, uh, on a more high fibre diet, uh, fruits, uh, taking vegetables. Uh, there are other also, uh, this uh, pharmacy that they can uh, take, like for example, like Tulose. Uh, that will soften the stools and all these things, uh, fibre gel. When you reach a certain age, like you are close to your 40s and 50s, uh, it is not just sufficient just to close one eye and then um, treat it with suppositories and uh, tablets uh, because now you will be thinking about something like colon cancers. And uh, usually the family uh, doctors will refer you to the specialist uh, in the hospital and uh, the doctors in the hospital will make sure that they do a, a, a per rectal examination that's when he examines the anus to make sure that there is no swelling other than the amaroids above uh, the, where the pot of bleeding is secondly would be he will usually recommend a thing called colonoscopy which is uh, a, an instrument or camera that uh, can be inserted through the anus when the, the patient is sedated uh, and we can see the rest of the colon, uh, whether uh, are there any polyps or whether any cancers that are concomitantly growing uh, there that may, be, uh, that may account for the amount of bleeding that uh, such patients have. If, for example, the patient presents with more than just bleeding, uh, that means it bleeds a lot excessively, then we would recommend uh, operations. Uh, now, operations can be divided into a few, those that you can do as a day surgery uh, and you don't need anaesthetic at all. Now with this instrument, you are able to suck the pulp into this instrument and fire a rubber band at the edge, at the base of the hemorrhoid. And it is equivalent to like hanging the hemorrhoid. After some time, 24 hours usually, the 
whole head of the hemorrhoids falls off. Alright, and then what happens is that you have an ulcer, but as the days go by, the ulcer heals and it closes the gap so that new flesh is uh, comes to grow over uh, where the old hemorrhoid is and so it doesn't bleed anymore. This is why ligation, this is one of the methods that we use that doesn't need general anaesthetic at all. Another method that we use is called injection of oily phenol. This is a, a chemical that causes blood vessels to sclerose or dry up by itself. Now, uh, again, this doesn't need anaesthetic and what it needs is a surgeon who is able to see the, and visualise where the pile is and inject the chemical above, just above the pile so that the blood vessels that are supplying the pile can be dried up. And again, the same principle, the area will slough off and then it will heal by itself. Now, these are two, a, two most commonly used non-anesthetic uh, non uh, methods for treating piles. Now, uh, bigger piles, we would have to go in under general anesthesia. Now, under general anesthesia, they are, in the past, what we do is that we use the Milligan-Morgan method, where you use scissors to cut. Now, however, medicine has changed a lot and now you actually use diatomy, which is well equivalent to almost laser precision uh, to the cutting out of the pulse. And what we do is that when the patient goes under anesthetic, we are able to excise or cut the whole of the MRI with the blood vessel attached. And so the whole thing is just taken off and either we leave it for the wound to heal by itself or we can stitch the wound up. This is called closed hemorrhoidectomy. Right. Uh, another way is a stapler method. This is called a, it's a circular stapler. And it is much bigger than that. It's, uh, it has a handle where it can be inserted into the anus. And what we do is that we can stitch and pull all the amorites into one bundle. And the stapler is able to cut off all the amorites and staple the good flesh together. Uh, this is called uh, the circular staple amoridectomy. Now, lastly, uh, the latest uh, way of uh, doing it is what you call the transanal uh, hemorrhoidal artery. It's, th it's called THD, sorry, it's a lot. Um, and what it does is that a lot of times when we do the surgery under anesthetic, you are not sure where the blood vessel is. So, this instrument is able to identify precisely where the blood vessel is coming from in the inside. It's what you call a Doppler. And you can actually hear the beat, the, the, the heart beat of the MRI. And where it is, you are able, we are able to tie that area up and stitch the whole area uh, into the anus so that uh, basically the blood supply to the MRI is uh, terminated. Risks and complications of stage 4 treatment, like any surgery, uh, you go through the risk of anaesthetic uh, because it is uh, uh, an operation. Uh, the patient has to go get uh, the gas and the injections to help them sleep. Uh, that is the risk for anaesthetic. Problem number two is the risk for bleeding because here we are, we are actually cutting the pulse up. There may be excessive bleeding, but with the use of uh, this diatomy, we are able to burn the the, uh, the blood vessels very precisely. Now, the third problem that you may hear in the past uh, of patients coming out from such major operation is incontinence. Now, the problem with incontinence is because of the instruments that were used in the past, just scissors or just cutting with blades and all these things. Nowadays, it's very precise. We are able to minimize the wounds and also at the same time, we minimize the danger to the muscles. The muscles are called sphincters. They give us continence, which is able to control our motion. Now, continents are divided into a few degrees, uh, uh, whether it is related to the operation or not. You have incontinence to win. That means, let's say for example, you laugh very loudly and, and then uh, you fart uh, because you can't control. So, you are incontinent to win. But you also know that you can be uh, minor incontinence is when you have food poisoning, you have diarrhea, 
and again the water you are in, uh, unable to control but if you have normal motion you are able to control and then lastly which we we never see uh, in uh, uh, the complications for hemorrhoid operation are what you call fecal incontinence where that means they, like an old person who have no control of his PCC has to wear pampers this doesn't happen at all so most of the time after the, before the operation we will tell patients that maybe you may get some fecal uh, uh, sorry this uh, flatus incontinence to win uh, and very seldom that you get uh, incontinence to uh, this uh, uh, fluid uh, feces. We are starting to see recurrence in amyloids uh, because we know that uh, some of these are hereditary. When you cut out a blood vessels, uh, you cannot be uh, human body will never be completely uh, devoid of blood because the blood brings it the nutrition it brings it the oxygen so uh, the body learns to form other channels so that it can apply uh, supply to the anus now if the patient already has a hereditary cause of uh, uh, amyloids yes it can come back again the second thing is of course you go back to the old habits old habits die hard you know you go back and you eat all sorts of things are spicy or you forget to eat uh, you know all uh, these uh, uh, um, uh, fruits and vegetables yes they do come back again and I see that in patients who had operation when they're very young when maybe in their 20s or 30s and then by 60s or 70s because they did not change their habits or uh, they have a strong family history it comes back again yeah but they are less severe post-surgery care most of the time, you, because of the, uh, the, the new methods of operation, the wounds are very small. The medicine that you take would be for painkillers. And again, that has improved a lot. In the past, you used to have to take medicine for four times a day. Now, just one tablet is enough. Secondly, antibiotics. Antibiotics, has side, the, the modern ones have less side effects. You don't get a lot of allergies and all these things. And then thirdly, you continue to use uh, painkiller creams. Uh, painkiller creams are readily available now after surgery where you can just apply and numb that area. And uh, you'll be surprised that after one to two days, uh, you hardly notice that there is uh, pain anymore. Uh, but I think I would usually advise the patients on something that is uh, not related uh, to pain or infection but uh, the, the spouses are rather uh, unhappy about because after any operation uh, the wounds uh, have some secretion it's yellow liquid that comes out it's called serum and if you don't have a liner, uh, usually I would tell the patient, whether it's male or female, you put on a panty liner, at least the secretions won't stain your furniture. Otherwise, your spouse will be very uh, upset. The bed has a stain and the furniture has a stain. And uh, if you just adhere to that, after 10 days to 2 weeks, it just dries up naturally by itself.